It's not just about spring course. Zach Young is a pastry chef extraordinaire, but more than that, the love, the passion, the enthusiasm he puts into what he does really exemplifies, I think, that whatever we are, whatever we do in life, we can bring real pride, real conviction, and real craft to what we do. My guest right now is a master pastry chef, a uh, finalist in Top Chef Just Desserts, and of course, um, a host on Unique Sweets. You shot to fame by somehow managing to create a variation on that Thanksgiving monstrosity, turducken. <laughs> a sweet version of Tadakan. Explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Thanksgiving is such an over-the-top holiday and it's, it's all about food. Um, and it, it truly started as a joke because the Tadakan is just so insane. But also, I have a problem with Thanksgiving desserts where I actually want everything, you know? And the plate was never big enough for me to get a slice of every pie. So I said, why, why not put it all in one? So we ended up coming up with the pie cake in, which is a layer of pecan pie, pumpkin pie, spice cake, apple pie filling, and then all frosted together like a cake with cinnamon buttercream. <laughs> um, so all of your Thanksgiving favorites in one. And while it started as a joke, it then blew up. And every year I forget that it's actually also delicious too. It's not just, it it's just not just over the top to be over the top. Uh, it's actually good. I love your cakes. You have like emoji cookies and um, pina colada macaroons. I mean, this seems to me like a queer boy's fantasy of what dessert world is all about. Uh, it's like a lot of fun, a lot of flavors, and really letting your imagination wander. Like there's nothing traditional in the desserts you make. Do you think it stems back to childhood? I think the wonderful thing about pastry is that there is a sense memory attached to it. People have an emotional attachment to dessert, whether it's a flavor combination that reminds you of your childhood, a peanut butter and jelly cupcake that reminds you of the sandwich your mother packed for lunch, or it's, it's a pumpkin pie that your grandmother used to make. Desserts are transportive. I love watching people's faces. The flavors take them back to a, another place in time. We all know um, that the kitchen can be a brutal place, especially for LGBTQ people. It is typically a very masculine, heterosexual, aggressive environment. Have you had to challenge some of that culture in your own life? I think in many ways there is this old school mentality of this is how chefs train. You know, there's, there's a breaking in or a breaking. Um, you know, it's very verbal. There's a lot of yelling uh, and throwing things. And I think what I've realized and what I love about the pastry community in particular is that at the end of the day, what really matters is what you put on the plate. I think a lot of people in, in the food community now don't care about gender, race, sexual orientation. What really matters is your talent. And that's really freeing, actually. Now, I had a peep at your Twitter account um, before we met today, and there was one of your tweets where you took issue with someone who was essentially scolding or making fun of, uh, of a boy doing, I think, dance. And you referred to being pushed up against the lockers as a kid who enjoyed the performing arts. Can you talk about your time at school? I mean, did that bring you into conflict with other, other school kids? Growing up, Middle school especially, I think is really the worst time for everyone. And I didn't fit in, you know? I was terrible at sports. I was also uninterested in sports. I spent my afternoons in dance class and at theater class, and I did not fit in. And also they didn't understand it, you mm -hmm. know? I understood baseball, I just didn't like to play it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't, they didn't get what I did. I had a moment in eighth grade when there's, there's an eighth grade musical every year. I got cast as the lead, Oklahoma, <laughs> and the entire grade has to participate in it. So all of a sudden, all the kids who got picked for every team were struggling through the choreography, the songs, and there was actually a, a really kind of powerful moment of realization where they realized while they were practicing their jump shots, this is what I was doing. So it was kind of my coming out in a way of, you know, this is what I've been working on. 
Was there a moment that stands out that represented a, an obstacle or a challenge to being who you wanted to be? I think my, my biggest obstacle came out of college when, you know, I went to high school for theater. I went to college for theater. I moved to New York. I had been singularly focused my whole life on this career in the theater, and I just got disenchanted. I realized that I didn't love it anymore. So at 23, I, I found another passion, which happened to be baking cookies, and I had to go back to my parents, who had supported me from age eight you know, every dance class, every theater camp, boarding school, college, and say, you know what? I don't really want to do that anymore. I want to make cookies. That was a, a massive life-changing moment. You know, how can I change the trajectory of my life at 23? Now, of course, you know, <laughs> I look back at that and I'm like, people have second acts and third acts and, and fourth acts and reinvent themselves all the time. That's right. That's life, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing's linear. So, you know, it was, it was about passion for me. I, I can't do something that I'm not passionate about. That is my driving force. I'm incredibly lucky to be able to do what I love every day and continue to build that and grow that and find different branches and avenues within the field. What I love about pastry is every day there's a sense of accomplishment. You go into work, whether it's, oh look, I made a wedding cake, or we did 700 dinners. There's so many milestones you hit every day. You know, you're not working towards one massive goal. Because also I don't think that's how goals work. Goals are ever changing. The finish line keeps moving. And it's not about the finish line, it's about those individual goalposts that you hit. How important for you has it been to represent uh, as an LGBTQ pastry chef in such a public environment as the Food Network? You know, it's, it's interesting. I think there are activists who are out there on the front lines doing really important work and being very vocal and driving this ship. And then, as I've learned, there are people that can be activists simply by being. And I never thought of myself as really having any value or contribution in that sense. You know, who am I? I make cupcakes. I talk about cake on television. But then I, I get some responses. You know, someone sent me a message on Instagram the other day that said, you know, thank you so much for being you. You are the reason I was able to come out to my family. And it's like, what did I do? I, I don't think I did anything other than be myself. Um, and I think the fact that networks, major networks, can now have queer characters who are not just the gay next door, who are normal people, Front and center. such as myself. I'm just proud that we've reached some level of normalcy where it's not like I need to be wearing heels while doing it or wearing eyelashes. I have no problem doing that either, by the way. If anyone wants to do a show with me wearing heels and eyelashes, <laughs> totally down for that. But there's many ways to be, to be a, an activist mm. in the community, you know, to, to just be yourself. Mm. I'm touched and heartened by the greater acceptance that we're entering into in this world now.